Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Amazon just confirmed Fallout Season 2. There was a pretty clear teaser for the next part of the story based on the way they ended things in the Season 1 finale, primarily Season 2 being based on the events of Fallout New Vegas. And for those of you asking about how this series is supposed to fit into the continuity of the games, Todd Howard, the creator of the games, actually clarified that in the show isn't meant to be retconning any of the games, so we'll break it down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'll try to do videos for all the season two episodes because the show's been so well received. Like it's been so great. People love it so much. I'm expecting Amazon to release it a little bit more like they do with the boys TV show and with Invincible. Like they started out binge dropping the shows, but when they were proven to be very popular, they start by releasing the first couple episodes. And then after that, we we'll just release episodes weekly. But based on when they're actually scheduled to start shooting season two, they won't be able to release it until 2026. So it's going to be a while before we actually get season two episodes. Jonathan Nolan also already said that the next person that he wanted to cast for season two would be Aaron Paul from Westworld. Just because he liked working with Aaron Paul so much and Aaron Paul in real life is a huge fan of the Fallout games. So you can let me know in the comments who you want Aaron Paul to play during the Fallout series. But at the end of the finale, they tease Hank McClain, played by Kyle McLaughlin, escaped to New Vegas. He steps on the skull of a death claw, also revealing that they would be doing more death claws in season two. The producer said the reason why you didn't see them in season one is mostly because they just didn't have enough episodes to actually get everything in from the games. Like there were so many things that they did not do in season one. So they just opted to save a lot of that stuff, a lot of those characters, story twists, creatures for future seasons, like the glowing ones, aliens. There was a teaser for super mutants in the Enclave at the beginning of the season. It was a blink and you'll miss it kind of reference though. When Wilzig was running his experiments with cold fusion, he sees them carting the body of a dead super mutant past him like, oh man. Presumably we'll see more of them in other creatures during season two and they'll probably save some stuff for even further seasons beyond that, like season three, whatever they wind up stopping at. They could do like 10 seasons of the show if they wanted to. And even though Hank was just a lowly executive assistant, like the lowest you could possibly get on the totem pole next to secretaries or like the janitor, he would still know Mr. House, who they showed in the flashbacks at the board meetings. He's the founder of Robco. We'll probably see a version of him during season two in present day, 200 plus years later after the Great War, confirming that the house always wins ending for Fallout New Vegas is the canon ending. You're one to talk, Freddy boy. You could lose money running a casino. Here's where we also get to the canon of the games. A lot of people were pointing towards what happened to Shady Sands, thinking that because Hank dropped the second bomb on the town, that meant that they had gotten rid of the new California Republic already. Shady Sands in the games was the capital of the NCR. So it's meant to be a really, really important faction during the present day of the games. But here's what Todd Howard and the producers said recently. They did an interview claiming that the show was not retconning any of the plot of the games and that Hank dropped the bomb on Shady Sands right after the events of the Fallout New Vegas game. We're threading it tight there, but the, the bomb falls just after the events of New Vegas. You know, Graham and Geneva wanted to blow up Shady Sands. The first thing they bring that up, you're like, what do you want to do? And just so people here and I know are watching this, like, we're careful about the timeline. There might be a little bit of confusion in some places, but everything that happened in the previous games, including New Vegas, happened. Um, we're very careful about that. There have been some of you claiming that you also saw them reporting that the show was meant to take place several years after Fallout 4. I hadn't seen that particular interview, but based on what Todd Howard and the others said about the destruction of Shady Sands taking place after Fallout New Vegas, I totally believe that now. Like, I do believe the show is meant to fit inside the canon of the games. Technically, at this point, it'd be after the canon of the games, but like they're going to eventually make Fallout 5. There were also a lot of people claiming that they implied the show had to swerve on anything that the developers were going to cover during the Fallout 5 game or doing anything that would throw the plot of that game off the rails. Todd Howard seems like he has some involvement with the TV show, kind of the same way George R. Martin is helping HBO adapt all of A Song of Ice and Fire for the Game of Thrones series, the spinoffs, the prequels right now. So I think he's probably helping them figure that stuff out. 
You might have seen that sales for all the Fallout games, like Player Base, actually went way up, particularly on Fallout 76, right after the show was released, meaning that they will continue making new games and continue doing the show for a long time. Based on all this, generally when you're making theories about what's going to happen on the show, assume that everything from the games is still canon, and at most, they'll just recontextualize details from previously established plot, for example, Fallout New Vegas. There are a couple different endings, and they're probably going to say that in the context of the show, the House Always Wins ending is the actual canon ending, so that Mr. House can still be around in present day. Here's my problem with the vaults. You can find a bunch of rats in the nest for a long time. They end up eating each other, so who's to say your rats are going to survive? Probably one of the biggest examples, though, of the show recontextualizing things that they only implied in the original games was who was responsible for actually dropping the first bombs to start the Great War. In the games, they'd always hinted and implied that vault -Tec might be behind it because there were vault -Tec logos all over everything, but they'd also implied that other entities, factions, might have something to do with that. The show, at least up to this point, though, wants you to think that vault -Tec themselves did it in their bid to gain control of the future. Like, that was the whole idea. They wanted to control the future, killing everyone else so that there would be no one else left for them to fight. But we're talking about making a significant investment. How can you guarantee results? By dropping the bomb ourselves. But I know there are a lot of theories that the Enclave orchestrated vault -Tec's decision, like the Enclave might have really been controlling vault -Tec because they existed before the Great War. During the games, they revealed the Enclave had been spying on vault -Tec in the board of companies here for years and had been planning for the Great War years before it actually went down. Who are you? And how do you know so much? Hey. So it wouldn't be too far off to theorize that the Enclave at least pushed vault -Tec to drop the first bombs. Getting back to Mr. House, like I said, the house always wins. A reference to Vegas, gambling in real life, also the name of one of the endings from the Fallout New Vegas game, probably now the actual canon ending. The whole idea is that the casino you're gambling at in real life will always win no matter what small victories you might have day to day. It would be weird if they didn't have Mr. House during season two. So like I said, that's probably how they explain he's still around. He created the technology that Bud Askins, the other vault tech executive, was using to extend his lifespan in Vault 31, turning himself into the brain bot with the probes in it. During the events of Fallout New Vegas, you learn Mr. House here had cryogenically frozen his body in a stasis pod and was using a very similar version of these brain probes to keep his consciousness alive and control everything around New Vegas, like he was wired into everything. He also had an army of Securitrons, which were basically like security robots. Robco also created the Mr. Handy robots that were voiced by Matt Berry, the real-life actor from before the Great War who was good friends with Cooper Howard. They just took his voice and used it for all the robots. Mr. House's whole plan was to live forever, essentially, in this state controlling everything. This tower that Hank sees in the distance here is the Lucky 38 Casino. Mr. House bought that before the Great War, turned it into his personal residence, Howard Hughes style, because in real life, Howard Hughes actually did buy a lot of Las Vegas casinos and lived at the top of one of them, turning into a recluse in his final years, kind of like what Mr. House has done, like basically turns into a recluse, putting himself in stasis, controlling everything. Speaking of extending your lifespan, there were a lot of questions about how Moldaver was still alive in present day and didn't look that much older than she did in the past. Like, she looked like she had a few more city miles on her, a few more wrinkles. There are a lot of you that wondered if she might be a synth or she just cryogenically froze herself like the vault Tech executives in Vault 31 and people like Mr. House. I do think eventually we'll start seeing synths on the show. I don't know if we'll see them in Season 2. They might save them for a future season. But based on the fact that Moldaver looked visibly older than her past self, my assumption would be that she just froze herself and periodically unfroze herself to check on her plan to reactivate her cold fusion device and participate in the new California Republic. She's in these flashbacks 14 years ago with Lucy's mother. That was probably when she unfroze herself to participate in the new California Republic. She probably just stayed unfrozen for the past 14 years while she was planning to find a way to get Hank so that she could reactivate her device. The funny thing about the code too, the actual vault Tech code here that she enters to activate the device is the release date of the very first Fallout game in real life. They didn't really touch on what happened to the NCR after Hank's second bomb, but I think they're still meant to be around. If Todd Howard made such a big deal about the show not retconning the games, I think that was them sort of slyly saying, oh, you'll see the NCR eventually. Lucy and Cooper Howard are on their way to New Vegas following Hank. Cooper said that he didn't want to kill him because his true goal was always to find his family, his wife and child, and because Hank wouldn't tell him where they were, he opted to plant a tracker on Hank's power armor that he stole. 
My theory is that he and Lucy will arrive at New Vegas in Season 2 Episode 1 and Lucy will be the POV character where everyone who didn't play Fallout New Vegas will just learn what happened to Las Vegas after the Great War and how it turned into New Vegas. Cooper might already know about Mr. House just because he's been around periodically since the Great War. Like, he's only been dormant for chunks of time, but he revealed that he'd been acting as a bounty hunter when he was active, and he'd been using that time to pursue people trying to find his wife and child. I think he was lying when he said that he was bounty hunting for love of the game. I think he was only doing that to earn money to get more serum to prevent himself from turning into a mindless ghoul so that he could continue searching for his wife and child. Cooper's wife kept referring to the good vaults, quote unquote, that Vault Tech had set aside for itself. She and his daughter would be in one of those. I don't think they'd have him searching for them for multiple seasons only to find them dead. I think what'll happen during season two is he'll just learn where they are. He probably won't find them till like season three or beyond. His family probably froze themselves, but because we've seen that a lot of people have unfrozen themselves previously in the past, his daughter might be an adult by now. Like she might have unfrozen herself and just be walking around now in present day. That'd be a very TV-style twist where Cooper winds up meeting his daughter but doesn't recognize her immediately because she's way older. Some of you also theorize that they'll turn his wife into a bigger villain on the show because they wanted you to think it was her idea to drop the first bombs, but I actually think that it wasn't really her plan. She was just reciting the plan given to her by the shadowy president of vault up here watching the board meeting. <laughs> She was just his proxy on the board, but they really did want her to seem complicit in what vault Tech was doing, so she shares as much blame as everyone else at vault Tech did. I do not think she will be the ultimate main villain, though. That would either be the mystery president of vault Tech or the Enclave. I've also seen a lot of theories that that mystery president will wind up being played by Todd Howard himself. That would be funny, but Todd Howard is actually already technically canon to the TV show. If you zoom in and enhance in the background here of Hank's office in Vault 33, there's a picture of him that's actually from the games. Regardless, I do think we'll see more Todd Howard cameos in future seasons in the background, so just keep your eyes peeled. There are a couple of things from the games that they'll probably save for even further seasons, like Aliens. I'm not expecting a ton of Alien stuff during Season 2, but we'll see. Then there was the whole subplot with Maximus in the Brotherhood of Steel, or the West Coast Brotherhood of Steel. He was heralded as this great warrior at the end of the finale getting credit for killing Moldaver, even though he tried to tell them he didn't kill her. They now laud him also as the great warrior who helped them gain control of Cold Fusion, which is essentially unlimited power. That pays off the whole subplot with the leader that wanted to reform the Brotherhood of Steel with Maximus into a much more hardcore version of itself. We will take power. We will start a new brotherhood with me as its head and the likes of you as its sword. He'd been going on and on about how the brotherhood had lost control of the wasteland and they'll probably start season two with them retaking control using cold fusion. They also kept referring to the other factions of the brotherhood like the east coast faction, the midwestern faction early in the show. We might wind up seeing them too. But if you think about it, season two is mostly focused on this area, like New Vegas area. So we'll probably see most of the show take place in and around here. They probably won't travel further east to like season three, season four or beyond. But everyone post your theories for season two in the comments below. Now that we know it's all about New Vegas and they've confirmed where the show fits in the canon of the games, it makes it a little bit easier to actually predict what they're going to do. If you didn't see, there's also a real life phone number that they gave you to call based on Vault Tech. It is hilarious and also kind of horrifying at the same time. Because if the worst should happen tomorrow, the world is going to need Americans just like you to build a better day after. Amazon's probably going to drop some bigger teasers for season two once they actually start filming later this year, but they will be filming later this year. Whatever they wind up releasing, of course I will do videos for it. We also have the Warhammer Henry Cavill series that they're working on right now. There's also a Bioshock series that they're working on. We'll probably get some bigger teasers for that in the next year too. Everybody click here for that Henry Cavill Warhammer trailer and click here for all my Fallout videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.